What is up, Warrior Rising family? Welcome back to Warrior TV. I'm your host, Alyssa. I'm the Director of Marketing and Media for Warrior Rising. And here we bring voice and vision to the incredible veterans that go through our programs. And we have an absolute treat today with Timothy Coffin, who is actually selected for the Detroit cohort next month. We're super excited. So we are going to get an exclusive pre-business pitch prep process, whatever you want to do, any other P word, and we're going to do it right here. So Timothy, welcome to the Warrior TV channel. Thank you. I appreciate uh, the invitation today. Absolutely. So to start off, what are you most looking forward to at Detroit? Well, honestly, um, what what I am looking forward to mostly is, uh, you, you know, in one sense, I missed the military and getting together with, uh, you know, fellow veterans and in business leaders to just to you know just to talk about the trials and tribulations of being an entrepreneur and and you know kind of get some slaps on the back and a little feedback i think just being part of the military family again is something i look forward to absolutely so you founded and what you're pitching in detroit is conquero ai so Correct. kind of walk us through what that is um and how you selected that name uh, well conquero uh in Latin means to seek, to search, and to procure. So this this company started uh, as a result of sort of a family tragedy. My son um, had a medical emergency, and, and he, oh, wow. he hurt his leg and was uh, had a cast on his leg, and, and it was starting to swell. And he, I took him into the emergency room. We were at the hospital, and... They needed to get the cast off immediately because uh, yeah, there's a thing called compartment syndrome, which can damage the leg. And the the, the cast saw broke. Wow. And so they didn't know where another one was. It took them 35 minutes to find another one going room to room in the hospital. And by the time they got back, my son's leg was was basically dead. It was completely paralyzed. The nerve damage, it completely damaged the nerves. And he went into septic shock and he almost died. And that was all because uh, clinicians couldn't find a piece of equipment when they needed it. So if you think about the name to seek, to search, and to procure, that's what Kinkiro means. And what our system does, it's an autonomous AI system that can find any piece of equipment in the hospital when you need it and basically direct the clinician to where it, where it, where it goes. Now, it does a lot of other things on, on top of that that's enabled, but the, the focus of this is to helping clinicians find what they need when they need it. What an amazing system that you've put into place. I mean, as a sister, uh, I have a sister who's a nurse and she had to go down to a floor she used to work on because the doctors didn't mm -hmm. know where the things were. So, I mean, that's a very common thing. That's not the first time I've heard that. So um, that's really going to make waves in the medical community for sure. Yeah. And, Interestingly enough, yeah. I mean, you mentioned your sister's a nurse. One of the the research, I, I, my background is in health research science. Mm -hmm. Um, that's what my PhD is in. So I, I do a lot of clinical research. And awesome. one of the things when I started looking at that is nurses actually across the country and really across the world um, spend an average of 72 minutes per shift just looking for equipment. Wow. So, I mean, that's an hour and a half a day just looking for stuff that if, you know, our system, if we can give them back 75 percent of that time, you know, that's time they're not spending on patients. That's time they're just fumbling around looking for things. Absolutely. Wow. That's incredible. I didn't even know <laughs> putting a number to it always brings it a little bit, you know, yeah, more realistic to the approach. But so this is not your first rodeo, as I'm no. aware, this is not the first startup you've had. So Probably my fourth or fifth. Yeah. Yeah. So you're you're well versed. Um, so tell us how if you could give some advice to anyone trying to start like do a startup, start a startup in a business with that. What is your expertise and your advice to them? Well, my expertise would be, you know, to have a solid uh, idea of what you want to do. Um, you know, as my wife says, a business is a hobby until it's a business. Um you know, in one sense, it's better to have someone pay you while yeah. you're building a business. So you don't necessarily have to quit everything, go whole hog into your business right away. You can uh, build it in your garage or wherever. And, and as it grows and, and develops into a, a business, you, you can transition your attention to it. And knowing what you want to do and making sure, you, you know, there is an actual market for what you want to do. Just because you're interested in it and you think it's a great idea, you really mm -hmm. need to validate that idea. 
through a lot of customer research and, and then, you know, figure out where the money's going to come from, um, whether that you're going to fund it or you're going to get other people to fund it. Yeah, that's a great. Piece uh, and, of and, advice. and the last piece of advice is, you know, there's it's hard. Um, it's not it's not going to be easy. Uh, you're going to have a lot of setbacks. You know, you you want to have fun while you're doing it. You want to be with people that you have fun with, you know, and, I, you know, at, at our company, we look at every failure as an opportunity for success. We don't look at failure as a, as, as a bad thing. Um, it's just another thing that didn't work. We go find something else yeah. to do. Yeah, we fail forward. That's yeah. what we do. Exactly. <laughs> awesome. I love that. And so how did Warrior Rising play the Warrior Academy, Warrior University, all of it together? How did that play into um, adding a new layer to what you're doing with the Kung Hero? Since obviously it's not your first time, what value did you get from this? Well, you know, I get asked all the time because I've been talking to a lot of investors what, you know, what my biggest fear is. Uh, it's not my people. It's not my technology and it's not my concept. It's not even my customers. It's where am I going to find the money? And what Warrior Rising helped me do is really focus my attention on what and how to communicate with potential investors, how to develop a pitch deck, what, what is important to say. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to I want to give put 50 slides in the pitch deck and tell them everything I need to know and why I yeah. do it and the whole background and stuff like that. I think the why I'm doing this is very important and resonates with with folks, but they don't need to know every detail of the yeah. design of my system. They need to know I got a system, um, and really focusing that that pitch down to a refined level, um, keeping it simple. And you know, since I've been doing this, I've been doing a lot of pitches, and and you know, an investment folks, have, I've done the one minute pitch, a, a five a five minute pitch, a ten minute pitch, you know. Yeah. So having that deck and being able to really narrow it down. A one minute pitch is actually the toughest. Yeah. <laughs> the elevator so, pitch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, really refining your message uh, it, to just the pieces of information that potential investors want, because the pitch deck is just a teaser. It's, it's that, uh, it, you know, it's that, you know, that invitation. That's when you walk up to someone and go, Hey, you want to go out? Um, yeah. <laughs> you know, and you have that 30 seconds or five minutes to get their interest so they can come forward later. And what warrior raising helped me to do is really to hone in and focus on that message to get the second date. Yeah. Awesome. And I know you touched on, you know, storytelling, and that's actually one of the most common questions that uh, veterans reach out to me since I do a lot of, you know, marketing and media other than the health and wellness that I taught during Warrior University, I help with like brand building and storytelling. And it's interesting to me that it's a little bit difficult to sometimes understand that we have a story or even find it, right? right. So was yours, when it comes to storytelling, I mean, you said it in the beginning, was that something difficult that you really had to think? Or was that just like, a, oh, I already know like my why? Well, I'm Irish. So yeah. I can tell stories. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, um, you know, the, like I said, in one sense, this story is hard for me to tell because yeah. it actually is is very, um, excuse me, <laughs> even now, okay. it's, mm -hmm. it is a very emotional story. It, it's it's something that, that I had to practice telling because this happens to me um, when I really think about what happened. It was a very traumatic part of our life. My, you know, my son as a result of this, ended up having 25 surgeries after. Oh my gosh. I mean, so for the next five months, we were in and out of surgery while he, wow. um, and I, you know, I know a lot of my veteran br brothers and sisters went through this themselves because, you know, this is very similar to a war injury. I thank God that my son's surgeon had just got out of the military and she was wow. a former uh, combat surgeon. So oh she, um, I was in Washington DC when it happened and she, uh, when she saw what happened, what, you know, the injury my son had, she went over to Bethesda and got some technology that the military had been developing to treat that type of things and brought it back to our hospital and used it on my son. So, wow. you, you know, it, so telling that story, it, the, the, the hard part of it isn't, is the getting through it quickly yep. and not, you know, not making too big a deal about it. Just talking it so you know one thing you mentioned a, a second ago Alyssa that you know I, I didn't touch on is the stuff that you were talking about the wellness you know this isn't my first rodeo and uh, I find that I'm always the last person I think of 
Yeah. Um, you, you know, in a startup, I was always paid last um, mm -hmm. financially. I made sure everybody got paid before I did. Um, I made sure everybody went home before I did. Uh, it, you know, and I had the tendency to not sleep, um, stay up late, and, and not take care of myself when I yeah. get into this highly focused mode. So, um, you know, the, the sessions that you had that say, you know, kind of slap me across the head and say, hey, stupid, you know, <laughs> take care of yourself. Don't, <laughs> you know, if you don't, like, how can I take care of my people and how can I take care of my family if I don't take care of myself? So that, that wellness focus, I think, is pretty important. Um, someone once asked me if, you know, how you find balance. I, I run a couple companies. Um, I teach at two universities and I coach hockey at one of the universities. Oh, wow. It's like, <laughs> you know, how do you find time? It's like, yeah. how do you find balance? And, you know, one of the, you know, one of the recommendations I make to people is that balance, if you try to find balance in your life, you'll kill yourself because there is no way that the responsibilities in your life can be equal. Mm -hmm. What I really recommend people is to find rhythm yeah. because there are times when certain things are going to have to take the front and you're going to have to focus on them. What you need to do is remember while you're focusing on that, you need to get back in the cycle. Sometimes you have to focus more on your family. Sometimes you have to focus more on your business. Sometimes you have to focus more on yourself. But to get in a good rhythm of going through those cycles so they're not too long. Because if you're focused too long on your business, you lose your family. And if you're focused too long on your family, you lose your business. So yeah. you just have to keep that rhythm. That's another great piece of advice for entrepreneurs. I mean, pouring into your cup so you can then pour into others. But also <laughs> that, that rhythm, that flow, um, getting into a flow state to, to be productive and to right. get everything done. Because that's something I completely agree with is balance. Um, I get asked the same thing. Um, how are you a mom? How are you doing this stuff? How are you able to leave your corporate job? And I was like, I had a, yeah. a lot of hard work. And I, it's not like I just did it with like, oh, like, I hope it works out. But it's, there's still no yeah. balance, even without the, the corporate side, like haunting me. I'm like, there's still uh, challenges on the other side. <laughs> and, and and I've seen people just, when I, I say kill, well, maybe even kill yourself, but uh, they just run themselves in the ground because they're trying to give a quality to every part of their life. And it's, it's just not possible and it's not always necessary. So I, I think that's an important lesson that people have to, to keep in mind. Absolutely. And kind of touching on something you had said. So when you do go through these tough times and most, uh, if not all veterans have something, even if it's just that transition period, right? Like you lose that purpose identity. Uh, maybe the place you go to next doesn't have tasks and purpose as the drivers, yeah. right? That's something that bothered me a lot in corporate is like, I am a very task and purpose oriented person. So how, yeah. what motivates you to keep pushing forward through the tough times, through, through the times that really make you think, do I even want to do this anymore? That's a good question. I, you know, I probably suffer from ADD. <laughs> um, Same. Because, <laughs> which, you know, can be a curse, but sometimes it's, it's, it's great because, you know, uh, you have those thoughts and you go, oh, a squirrel, and you're on to the next thing. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I, I do believe in God. I, you know, I, have, I, I meet with my, I would call, I guess, spiritual advisor at least once a month and spend an hour and just talk, you know, and, and it's, I don't know, I wouldn't, don't know if it's counseling or spiritual work, but I, you know, I do take time for that part of my life and, and that helps me maintain a focus. And, and you know, I love my family. Uh, and so I, I do this for them and I got to be honest, I do it for me too. Um, yeah. There is some validation in, in building, you know, I came out of special operations in the military uh, I, I'm kind of a cowboy when it comes to things, and, and entrepreneurism uh, is the most like special ops on the outside. You're, you, yeah. you know, nothing ever goes right. You're always <laughs> going into an environment that's 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 constantly dynamic and changing, and you you got to make decisions quickly. And it's it's the uh, you know it's the ultimate rush when it comes right down to it. That's probably why I've started five companies. Yeah, because uh, yeah, you know, once once they're working and everything's going right, it's like well, this is boring. Let's go do something else. <laughs> Let's go do it again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. So, how have you been pre uh, preparing yourself and your pitch? What's that process look like as we're heading into Detroit? We got a little bit of time. Um, how are you setting yourself up for success? Um, well, I, I mean, I pitch a lot. Um, I uh, pitch a lot to my mirror. Yeah. Um, I, I try different things. Um, I, I, I record myself and watch. Uh, I try 
you know, like my wife said, don't say, um, I realize that while I'm talking, you know, there's words like, um, like, uh, mm. you know, that I, I try to avoid saying silence is okay. If you don't know what to say next, don't talk. You don't have to yeah. make up words or, or fill in, fill in the silence like that. Yep. So <laughs> really, you know, you got to do the pitch a thousand times. Uh, try, trying to get off script is, is difficult. Also realizing that, that, you know, if I don't cover something that I really wanted to cover, it's not the end of the world, you know, and um, I have a good team around me. I, I have two partners. I, uh, one of them is, you know, 26, one is 36. And I'm today I turned 58. Today's my birthday. Oh, happy birthday. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, it, you know, so the, the good thing about my team is I have, uh, you know, youngest is my uh, youth and enthusiasm and I'm the old age and treachery. So we make it, we make a good, a good team. So I, I do rely on them. I do ask them for help. I make every time I pitch, you know, as soon as I get off, I like, what did I do? Well, what did I, what can I do better? I'm constantly seeking feedback from, from everybody. Uh, and I follow up and I, I really ask my team to hold me accountable because I know as a CEO, so many things come your way. If you try to do everything yourself, if you try to remember everything yourself, you're, you're going to miss a lot of things. So, you know, rely on your team to, to hold you accountable for things that you promise to do and uh, let, you know, and, and be open to feedback. Yeah. Uh, you know, I learned in the military when you walk in the room and you ask for people's opinion, you always ask the lowest ranking person first. Yeah. You know, you don't want the general saying, well, my idea is this, because then, you know, you never, you never get the real truth. So. I, and not that my partners are lower ranking than me, but, you know, uh, um, they're, they're equal to me, but I always try to get their opinion first before I express mine and try to, um, and there have been times where they've disagreed with me where, uh, you know, I'm, I have pride and I have, uh, <laughs> so, uh, I have to remember that, you know, while I'm the CEO, I'm, I'm not, I'm not a God. I, I, I do need to take other people's opinions into account and really evaluate them. And there's been times where I've just said, you know what, you're right, I'm wrong. And we'll move forward with what you're, <laughs> excuse me, what you're doing. No, absolutely. And I love that you touched on that too. When I was the XO, my last, you know, duty station, I did sensing sessions, right? So I would do that by myself because I would take notes and like, hey, anything that's in here is not going to leave this room with all the soldiers first. And then all the NCOs and then all my, you know, the other lieutenants in, you know, and it's interesting because you do want that feedback from bottom up or whatever you want to call it. Um, so I think that's a really great piece of advice that you, you know, have implemented as a CEO that like everyone's voices should weigh the same and should all matter because you never know where a, the next great idea is going to come from. Um, a different well, perspective as well. I remember sitting in a meeting when I was in, in the military and um, I was sitting there and my, my sergeant was sitting next to me and we were, we were talking electronic warfare stuff in physics and people would ask me questions and I'd turn to my sergeant and talk a little bit and, you know, then I'd answer and, and with this went on and, and a break, someone's like, why do you keep talking to the sergeant? I said, well, cause he's got the PhD in physics. I don't. You know, yeah, <laughs> he knows more than I do. I'm getting the opinion <laughs> from the guy that understands what he's talking about. Yeah. You know? So that no, makes sense. Oh, sorry. OK. So to kind of close it out, what are the key qualities you believe every successful entrepreneur should possess? Well, I believe I'm too dumb to fail when uh, I, I think optimism is is very important. Persistence is very important. And when I mean too dumb to fail, I, I don't look at things and say, gee, that can't be done. I really figure that it can be done. I just have to find the way, you know, so optimism, persistence, I think patience is important. Yeah. Uh, and I think empathy is important. Uh, you know, you need to understand other people. The other thing, uh, you know, I, I kind of joke about having ADD, but I tend to process information very quickly in a nonlinear fashion. Uh, so I tend to get to the answers much quicker than a lot of people when, when I'm in a room, you, you know, it, it, and I've, I've seen, you know, my son's kind of the same way. I said, you know, sometimes you have to wait for people to catch up. If you, if you see the vision, you can't just jump to the end. You need to walk people through it and you need to be patient as they, they get there. You can't just get upset and impatient when people don't see things, mm -hmm. don't see your vision right away. So 
you, you just need to to wait and be patient and, and let them get there uh, before you move forward. Excellent. A lot of <laughs> awesome, a lot of awesome information and tidbits, tips, all those types of things for entrepreneurs. And we will be following up with you after the event. So everyone stay tuned because we will talk to Timothy again, but I just wanted to say thank you so much. And can you give us like a website that if anyone's interested in Conquero, where they can locate that at? So our website is uh, www.concuro, C-O-N-Q-U-I-R-O dot A-I. And we'd be happy to have you visit. We'd be happy to have you invest. Yeah. Um, got very good terms right now. And Alyssa, I just wanted to say uh, to thank you and the group at Warrior Rising and tell you that uh, I'm very honored that I was selected to come yeah. to Detroit. And I look forward to meeting you in person. Absolutely. Likewise, I'll see you in Detroit along with the other veterans. I'm super excited for this event and to see all of the pitches. So thank you again, Timothy. And for everyone listening, if you're unaware of what Warrior Rising is, we are the premier nonprofit for veteran entrepreneurs. So whether you're in the beginning, the middle, or you've already established your business, you have five businesses like Timothy here, then this is still the place for you. So thank you for tuning in and we'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.